All right, this video is meant to show you uh, some of the things that you can do with your classes from last school year in terms of getting data that you can use to help you in planning for things you're going to do this school year. So uh, in order for this to be helpful, you need to have already been using ExamView. So if you go under ExamView Test Manager, and we're going to open up one of our classes from last year. I'm going to open an existing class and I'm going to look for my biology class. So Landry Bio first block. So I'm going in here and I want to be able to take a look at how my kids did on my exam so I can see where there were uh, issues on the exam. So I have my final exam highlighted right now and I'm going to go under report. All right, and some of the things I can look at, you get your assignment results, which I'm assuming people have been using. Uh, it makes it easy for plugging things into PowerSchool. There's student progress reports, and I haven't really used much with that. If you're doing open-ended responses, there's a worksheet for that. The two that I use the most are the item analysis summary and the item remediation summary, and essentially the same thing. So I'm thinking the item analysis summary is a, a good spot to start. So I'm going to go item analysis summary. I can pick my category so if I want to look at by benchmark I can uh, but for the most part I, I want to look at all the questions and uh, I've make sure I have the right assignment I can set a threshold level what that means is it's going to highlight questions where people where more than 30 percent of the class got it wrong so questions that um, less than 70 percent of the class got correct is going to highlight those automatically for me and so I'm just going to leave it at the default. And I've never really done anything with the filters, so I don't know what to tell you with that one. I'm going to click OK. And here's my report. Now when you read this report, it's going to show you the question. It's going to show you the, uh, the number of students, or the average number of students that got it correct. What the correct response was supposed to be. And then it gives you the percentage of responses. So 21% of my students chose B, and 73% chose C and it looks like uh, the 5.3 percent that's probably one student I have one student whose grade didn't get figured into it so they show up as the NA and so you gotta look at that sometimes that uh, takes your percentages and messes them up if you have students that did not take the actual uh, assessment alright and so uh, why is this helpful I can now go through and see on question number three only 57.9 percent of my kids got it right alright correct answer is supposed to be D and you can see more people chose D than any other but it looks like B had a higher percentage of people guessing at it as well and then A and C you had a few students that were guessing those responses as well so now I can do several things with this this will help me to evaluate whether these are good questions if you look at number seven here only 15.8 percent of my kids got that one right that's a red flag that tells me maybe that's not the best question in the world and so when I look back at it, I can see more kids answered B and A than they did the correct answer. And so that lets me know maybe I should go back, take a look at that question, and see if maybe there's something in the question that is misleading and uh, causing the kids to uh, choose the incorrect response. And maybe I might want to rework that question. I can also use this to uh, get together with the person that I also teaches this class so in my case Carrie McKinley and I we will get together and we will compare these results and if we see that both of our classes got number seven a low percentage that's another indication that's probably a poor question but there's also times when we do this where say question number five sixty three point two percent of my kids got it correct whereas ninety percent of Carrie's students got it correct we can then go back and look at question number five and have the discussion as to what did you do when you taught this topic and see what the difference is in terms of instructional strategies and then we can use each other as resources to help make our teaching uh, better on certain areas where we're uh, currently not doing as well. All right, so if I want to print this off, it's, it's simple, just click print. You want to print the report for this assignment choose your printer and you know the drill from there. Alright, so this is a great resource to use to 
dev or to double check to make sure your questions are good questions and then it's also good you can compare classes side by side so for instance if I was teaching biology first second and fourth block I can compare all three classes and see if there's a difference between the classes and then I can also use this so that I can work with other colleagues that are teaching the same class and see if there's differences between their classes and my classes so that we can try to make uh, each other better so if you have any questions on how to use these reports feel free to to let me know and I'll try to help you out have a good day